Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 10 most hated champions in solo queue. These champions tend to have extremely annoying abilities or just overall feel awful to play against. Starting us off strong, we've got the champion with one of the highest ban rates at the moment, Zed. While Zed may not be seen as OP by any means at the moment, he can be extremely annoying to play against. His laning phase is fairly safe in lower ranks and he's able to snowball off only a few kills. Nothing feels worse than winning lane just for the enemy Zed to just get a double kill off of Rome. From those kills, he can now all in you with just his ultimate and his EQ combo. Overall, Zed's snowball ability makes him feel really bad to play against and it's a key reason for his high ban rate. Next up on our trailer, we've got the jungler that strikes fair into ADC and enchanters all around, Kane. While Ross can be extremely annoying with his incredibly strong survivability, we're specifically going to be focusing on Shadow Assassin Kane. This version of Kane offers the incredible ability to zoom through walls, which grants bonus vision, high mobility, and the enemy can only guess at what part of the wall you're in. Paired with this, he has his W, which can deal a hefty chunk of damage, doesn't really have a real cast time, and its range is fairly long. Overall, Kane is a champion that a lot of players hate because while his early game may not be that great, once he gets this form, he can easily 1v9 games. Before we dive into our next most hated pick, don't forget to check us out at ProGuides.com, where you can view our great catalog of challenger coaches that can personally create a walkthrough to your dream rank. You got a busy schedule? Well, we've got you covered. Our trained roster of coaches are here 24-7 to help you guys reach your goal, whatever that may be. So, what are you waiting for? Go check us out and make sure that you get the victorious skin this season. Regardless, let's get back into the video and dive right into our next few bot lane picks. Pulling us back into the video, we've got yet another assassin, Kiana. While Kiana may have received some nerfs, it's still known that many hate her thanks to her W. While her earth element offers a strong execute and the water element is fairly strong CC, the biggest issue that people have with her is her invisibility. Kiana is able to go invisible and deal a huge chunk of damage, then, within a few seconds, she can go invisible for another time. If she's ever caught out, she can whittle down her opponent with this deadly combo. Pair this with her ultimate and dash and she can cover a ton of distance with the blink of an eye. Not to mention the extremely high damage that she offers. Overall, Kiana is an annoying pick to play against for a lot of people. We're just saying, there's a reason Dopa permabans it. Speaking of invisibility, we've also got Akali on this list. While Akali has been nerfed countless times since her rework, she continues to be a menace. Menace in a sense where she's maybe not that strong, but just super annoying to go against. I'm sure y'all remember the days when Akali's shroud used to stop turret shots. While it's not as problematic anymore, her shroud still offers a ton of utility. With it, she can engage a fight with her ultimate and just sit in her shroud during which the enemy team has to play around her and your team engaging on them. This also becomes an absolute nightmare for carries to deal with, and with her build versatility, she has even become a monster in the top lane. Overall, Akali deals a ton of damage and is incredibly slippery with her kit. Her shot lets her stall fight, her E may be used as a dash, and her ultimate has two dashes. This means that if you're looking to gank her, you need to be ready to lay her CC as good as possible or she'll slip away. On to our next pick, we've got one of the best enchanters in the game, Lulu. We've all been here before. You have a game-changing angle in a team fight, and right as you engage, you get polymorphed. This ability single-handedly stops a ton of champions, and to top it all off, it's a point-and-click ability. Alongside this, Lulu is able to peel her allies extremely well. Her Q lets her slow enemies, so they're easier to chase. Her W allows her to grant allies movement speed and attack speed. She can also use her W to disable an enemy champion by turning them into a harmless critter. Or cupcake. Right? Can she do that? I don't know. I don't know her skins. While her E and her R may not be as powerful as her polymorph, they still offer a ton of shield and heal potential. Overall, in the right hands, Lulu can become a monster to face, especially if paired with a hyper carry. Next up, we've got the champion that paints a lot of top laners who is known as Irelia. While Irelia has gotten a fair amount of nerfs, but in nerf Irelia, it seems that people still hate playing against her. Most notably, her Q is incredibly powerful in a minion wave. Not only does it heal her by a ton, but it also provides her with passive stacks that increase her DPS. This makes playing versus Irelia fairly difficult since she has so many opportunities to all in you. With her W, Irelia is also able to solid CC and reduce the damage taken, which is a super useful tool. Once she gains a lead, a good Irelia can snowball and lead her team to victory. Overall, Irelia is a champion that became a meme due to the small nerfs that she was given over time. Even if she's not in the best spot at the moment, she's still fairly strong and many dislike facing her. Now, before we continue on with the video, don't think for a second that we have forgotten about everybody's favorite pro guide tradition. For our question of the day today, we want to ask you all, what champion do you personally hate playing against? I personally hate going against LeBlanc and Yumi. Anyway, that's enough about my answer. Let me know your answers in the comments down below, and let's get back into the video. As we dive back into the video, we have a champion that can also dive your backline. Shinomir has always been a champion that people hated playing against. 
With a new item, Tsuchinomir continues to push his limit by building items like Gale Force that let him stick onto his enemies. Alongside this, he has a dangerous snowball potential. With his Q, he has great sustain and can even be picked mid lane because of it. His W makes it incredibly difficult to run away from him as it not only slows you, but it also reduces your damage. Then we have Tsuchinomir's ultimate and high crit chance, which is very difficult to deal with. Not to mention his fairly versatile playstyle that only makes it worse when you play versus him. He can choose his side lane and force enemies to answer his split push, in which case, he can just most likely kill a few of them or stall long enough for his teammates to take objectives. If no one answers him, he'll easily take multiple towers in the meantime. He can also help his allies in team fights by rushing and killing the enemy carries. With them gone, most fights tend to be won. Overall, Trinomir is a force to be reckoned with and is somebody that tends to tilt the enemy team after a few kills. Next up on our list, we've got one of Riot's newest champions, Zeri. This one shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Since release, Zeri has continued to get many hotfixes and nerfs. Her incredibly high movement speed, paired with how tanky her items make her, is why people hate playing versus her. Not only does she deal quite a bit of damage, but she can also outrun everyone and kite you to oblivion. Pair this with her ability to ride walls, and she's quite a mobile champion that can be a bit unfun to play against. At the moment, she offers some of the best team fighting in the game as long as she doesn't get hard CC'd immediately. Overall, Zeri is a fairly unique champion that is currently making her way into everybody's most hated list, including ours. Speaking of ADCs, we have yet another marksman that received relentless hate on release. Samara has strong snowballing power and high DPS during team fights. While her strength has been toned down a bit and then buffed a bit, people still hate playing against her due to her volatility. With her ultimate, Samara can quickly turn the tides of a fight and if she gets a reset, she can wipe out entire teams. On top of this, she has a win while it tends to tilt people once she blocks a key ability. Overall, Samara has quite the reputation as being one of the highest banned champions on release in quite a bit. Moving on, we got the marksman that Riot specifically designed for solo lanes, Uction. Uction has continued to be a massive threat to mid and top laners thanks to his powerful kit. His Q allows him to have some of the best lane prowl in the game, which means that he can help his jungler and roam around the map. As for his W, he gets a permanent invisibility near terrain and most importantly, he can resurrect people. In the late game, there's nothing worse than Uction suddenly reviving four allies because he last hit your carry. It doesn't stop here though. Uction's E offers incredibly high damage and mobility. With it, he can easily catch up to enemies or he can use it to avoid ganks. Overall, Uction can be difficult to deal with due to his kit, but at least his ultimate is pretty bad. Before we continue on to the end of the video, if you want to join an amazing community of people like you that loves lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. What are you waiting for? I'd love to see you guys there, so join up. Nonetheless, let's get back into the video and take a look at our final few honorable mentions. Starting off our honorable mentions, we've got the original demon of League of Legends, Teemo. This Jordal has single-handedly led to thousands of memes and even led to the creation of his own little devil skin. Teemo's reputation is due to his powerful laning phase that punishes most top laners. Not only is he ranged, but his E increases his on-hit damage while also adding a poison. And if the enemy top laner ever gets on top of Teemo, he can easily use his Q and W to escape. With his Q, Teemo can blind the enemy laner while also dealing quite a bit of damage. As for his W, it's a good mobility tool overall. We can't even get started on his ultimate either. Not only are his mushrooms invisible, but they offer a ton of power. They deal good damage, have great objective control, slow, and are fairly low cooldown later on. Regardless of how you feel about Teemo's strength, I think we can all agree that he is fairly annoying to play against. Next up, we've got Yone who may catch a few of you guys by surprise. Since release, Yone has been a bit of a problematic champion. Besides his overloaded kit, Yone also took advantage of many bruiser and marksman items. With these, he's able to sustain through a ton of damage while also assassinating carries. And speaking of assassinations, Yone has one of the safest combos in the game. He can use his E and ultimate to gain a massive amount of distance so that he can delete the enemy carry, and then don't worry about it, if you didn't kill his enemies then, after he teleports back, his E will blow them up. Keep in mind, this effect works with things like GA as well. Overall, Yone can be an incredibly annoying champion to face, and for your sake, you better hope that he doesn't get many kills. Cause once Yone begins to snowball, the game may as well be lost. Last but certainly not least for our honorable mentions, we've got Kassadin. While Kassadin may not be in the OP spot for quite a while, he's still somebody that many players hate to play against. Besides the high amount of safety that he gets with his ultimate, it always feels like you're on a timer when facing Kassadin. Once Kassadin hits level 16, it's almost a universal agreement that the game is over. He's able to constantly port around, deal a ton of damage, and delete your carries. On top of this, he's able to build fairly tanky due to items like Frozen Heart. While his landing phase can be difficult at first, once he perfects surviving until level 6, Kassadin can and should be feared. And that sums up our video for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to join our ProGuides family at ProGuides.com. 
We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video, but don't forget, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.